Hey everybody, it's GauntletX, and welcome back to another premiere draft of the Chaos Ravnica format. That's one pack of Murders at Karlov Manor, one pack of Ravnica Allegiance, and one pack of Guilds of Ravnica. Without further ado, let's get into our pack one pick one, which is another sweet pack. We've got excellent cheap removal like Shock, that would be a super safe card to pick, or super flexible fixing like Gravestone Strider, but I'm going to go for what looks like a really fun build around. We've got a Delny Streetwise Lookout, and they're a 3 mana 2-2 two -two that's going to have creatures I control with power 2 or less be unblockable by creatures with power 3 or greater, and much more importantly, much more spicily, if an ability of a creature you control with power 2 or less triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So there are a lot of good enter the battlefield triggers within all three of these sets, and we could find some two mana creatures like Burglar Rats or something in future packs that are like when they enter the battlefield, your opponent discards a card that just go crazy with Delny. So it could be a fun build around. We'll see if we can't do maybe like some Orzov makes the most sense, uh, but Boros makes sense for this kind of card too. And really, any color has some amount of good two powerless creatures in it. So start off with Delny. See how that works out for us. For pick number two, the strongest card in the pack by far is a killer among us for just the sheer power level or the sheer power and toughness you're getting for this mana cost. You're getting a uh, five mana, four, four and two one ones off of the card, which is pretty great. So it's a pretty simple pick there. I guess the pride of whole clade technically works with Delny, but if we double up the the pride of whole clade ability, um, then we draw 30 cards and we mill ourselves. So that's not really a thing we want to do. Yeah, let's just take a killer among us here. For pick number three, we have the Topiary Panther, very reasonable option out of the green for some land cycling, for some mana fixing. Also, Escape Tunnel is mana fixing we can play in any deck. There's also a Shock still in here, pick three, for excellent cheap removal. These are the three best options here. Although I suppose if we're playing a bunch of really cheap creatures in black and white, Treacherous Greed is a fine way to sacrifice a little 1-1 that you poked your opponent with. I think these three are the spiciest cards, though. I'm going to go for the Shock here. All right, pick four, still an escape tunnel here as well. There's also Loxit on Eavesdropper for an incredible value play and a Museum Night Watch for a really solid uh, two-for-one creature there. I think I'll take the Loxit on Eavesdropper. As much as I like Escape Tunnel as fixing, I think that the non-land cards in Murders at Karlov Manor tend to be a bit stronger than those in Ravnica Allegiance and Guilds of Ravnica, so it makes a little more sense to try to spend your picks on mana fixing in pack two and pack three when you're taking the fixing over weaker cards generally, because um, then you can just grab a bunch of guild gates. But it is still perfectly reasonable to grab a bunch of escape tunnels and be able to uh, pivot onto any rares you open and stuff like that. Pick five. This pack is pretty empty. I suppose there's a Crocodile if we can play in just green, or we can play it in just blues. That's the most flexible card. Uh, but I do not like Scene of the Crime as fixing. There's just too much main deckable artifact removal, honestly, in all three of these sets, um, that I'd just be concerned about our opponent blowing up our land and that would end in disaster. We could take like Forensic Researcher or Outcold. Those are both a little bit better than Crocodile, but they force us onto blue to play them. I'd rather just take the Crocodile. We don't have to jump ship and, and pivot onto any other colors to play it. Now we've got a Sample Collector, which is fine. Not great, but fine. Pick seven. We've got more blue spells. Okay, green cards like Rebel Belt Maverick to set up your draws. Hedge Whisper is a very late game play, but it can make some big 5 5 beef. I think I'll just set up my draws here with a Maverick. Pick 8, we got a Vitugazi Inspector or a Glint Weaver. Green looking wide open. White, not so much. We found one Delny and that's it, but we're getting like pick 9 Vengeful Creepers towards green, which is excellent. There's still plenty of blue running around, so I guess this might be the uh, pivot onto green-blue kind of draft. Sadly, for Delny and the Shock here. Take the deduce here for excellent value. And now we get to take a really late out cold to stun things and draw a card. 
I have, in my experience, seen some pretty long games in this format, and some nice, like, tempo-y games, so just, like, draw twos like Deduce, tempo plays like Out Cold. I think they played pretty well in this, uh, this Chaos Draft format. So I guess we're hopping on a Simic here, and see if we can't get anything great in Simic in pack two, because that's where the Simic cards are. We didn't open up any Simic in this pack, but we got a Fairy Duelist, which is a pretty solid instant. Or a Wrecking Beast is an okay finisher, but I'll take the Fairy Duelist. Combat trick on a body is pretty great. Ooh, we could go for a Flying build around with Windstorm Drake. This is very good if you have a lot of Flyers in your deck. Currently, we only have one, but if we get enough, it's sweet. Alternatively, Chillbringer is just always great. This stuns something when it hits the board, and it's a 5-mana 3-3 three, three Flyer. It's also a Trollbred Guardian if we want just a large finisher. 5 mana 5-5 five five that turns into a 7-7 seven seven trample. I mean, we are deeper into green than blue, but I think with the way this draft pot has been going, we're almost definitely in specifically blue-green. But I mean, I guess we can still lean towards the green card. Trollbred Guardian also kind of the coolest, the funnest. It's just large beef. Pick three here doesn't really have anything for us, but we do have a shock in the side here, so there is a chance we get to go gruel with this Zerta Goblin or this Rhythm of the Wild. Both very reasonable options. I think I like the Goblin a little better. Two mana, three, three is just really good, but you could draw Rhythm of the Wild at the wrong time. If you top deck this in the late game when you've already cast all your creatures, it's just a dead draw in a top deck war, which can be an issue, so... Take the Zerta Goblin, which always does something when you draw it. I mean, as long as you have the red source to cast it. All right, we're two cards into red, four cards into blue. And I think blue's more open, so red is still not that likely, but it is an alternate option. Oh yeah, pick four Chillbringer. We definitely take that. Take that over the uh, Rampaging Rendhorn here. I think this kind of tempo play is just great. Gates of Blaze is a really fun one. If you draft just every gate in the draft pod and play five color, this is one of your best ways to stay alive against more aggressive decks. A board wipe for only three mana. Super cool card, but obviously not what we're doing here. Pick five. No respect for Chillbringer. We'll take every copy in the draft pod. That is going to result in us having a lot of five mana stuff to do, but I think our curve can be a little higher than it would be in most modern limited formats because this format is a bit slower where everybody is dirtling around with a bunch of colors. I've definitely been aggro curved out before where our opponent goes one drop, two drop, three drop, and we just lose, but most games don't play out like that. They go pretty long to where each player can take turns playing five drops eventually. Pick six doesn't really have anything. I mean, there's a seven mana finisher, but I've already got a bunch of five mana cards and a better seven mana card with Glint Weaver, so I don't think I have room for that. So I'll just take the uh, Scorch Mark in case of Gruel. Plus, there is a lot of like splashing in a third color. So if we like splash in red here, we go um, Simic with a little Is It Splash for some red stuff. Uh, Scorch Mark could be helpful. Pick seven, Chillbringer. Zero respect for Chillbringer. Yeah. I mean, there is like a critical mass of Chillbringers where we should probably stop drafting them because I don't think you're supposed to run like six five mana cards, but that's too bad because I'm going to take every Chillbringer I see just for science at the very least. Now we can take a slime bind, reasonable little combat tricky kind of removal. It's not great removal, but it's okay. Collision Colossus is interesting. Main deckable flying removal that also works as a combat trick. Wilderness Reclamation is a fun build around, but you need a ton of stuff to do at instant speed to make it worth it. I guess it's good with disguise cards. That's kind of cool, but I've only got like the two. I'll just take the collision here. <laughs> Pick 10 Chillbringer. Come on in. Join the party. Well, I know what's on the, uh, the deck box artwork now. It's going to be the Chillbringers. Alright. Folly is not or Volley is not main deckable. Just rare draft the uncommon. No, nobody's on the, the five color gate stack. Sad day. Sad day for the gates of blaze. All right, what do we get out of pack three? 
Pack three, we could get blue red multicolored cards. We could get is it cards, but that's the only two color pair within our three colors here. Alternatively, I guess we could take like blue black cards and splash that way, or green white cards and splash that way, because we're not married to our red as our splash. So we'll we'll keep that in mind. All right, no good green and no good blue. There's just an okay capture sphere. I mean, we're pretty low on removal. Maybe we have to take it, but we've got a lot of tempo, a lot of stunning things with all these chillbringers. Take a hypothesis for red burn off the splash. That actually might be fine. Draw two, discard one, deal four. Sure. Add that to the red stack over the capture sphere. Pack three, pick two. Now we can take an Is It Guild Gate, or we can try to splash in a Status Statue instead, which is a much easier splash because no matter what, we can always do the Death Touch trick. Um, and it's obviously great removal splash as well. It's pretty hard to splash in the double white march, the multitudes, but that's a huge finisher. It's a million one ones. I'm going to speculate towards uh, the black splash over taking the guild gate towards the red splash, because I don't think I'm going to throw all of these in. I'm really just going to splash like one card in this deck because we're so deep into green and blue. I don't think we need more than one or two cards to splash in. Um, pack three, pick three. Looks like Watcher in the Mist, but I have six five drops, so I don't really have room for it. We've got room for more two mana plays like Night Veil vale Sprite, though. Great way to set up your draws throughout the game while chipping away for damage. All right, I'll take another Night Veil vale Sprite. I will take that over to Mirror Guildgate, although Guildgate would be helpful. Pick four. There's also Charnel Troll here, which is surprising, pick four, but it is kind of hard to keep it alive, especially if you're not Golgari at your core, which we aren't. It would be a splash. I'm just going to go for the sprite over the Charnel Troll. Okay, now I can take a Golgari Guildgate to have at least one Guildgate to help splash. Alternatively, Whisper Agent is okay. I guess the issue here is we need three more non-land cards, but we can get there. I'm going to grab the Golgari Guild Kit. I think we can find a better non-land than these. Assassin's a very good card, but it's way better earlier, so it's a way harder to splash in than Status Statue, which is always good thanks to Status. Um, pick six. Basically nothing in blue or green, so now we can splash in a Deadweight. Hitting double black for Deadly Visit is not going to be particularly reasonable for this deck, sadly. But that card is very good. Severed Strands is okay. We don't have a ton of expendable stuff to sack to it, though. I think Deadweight's just better. Um, but I could also just take a 4-mana four 4-3, four, honestly, to curve out with, because are we really splashing in Deadweight? Probably not. Okay, pick 7. Pax favors a fine combat trick. I do need more non-creatures. I've got 16 creatures, for sure. Could also splash in Notion Rain for card draw. That would be fine. Rather go Pax favor, though. Keep the splash super easy. Uh, Demir Informant's a great way to set up your draws while getting a nice 1-4 body out. Figure Spore Worm's a fine finisher, but look at all the fives. We've... Got ways to end the game. Let's grab the Informant for the mid-game. Grab another Golgari Guildgate. Super happy with that one. Taking it over Capture Sphere. And that's it. Pick 10, Golgari Locket. I really don't recommend the Lockets if you can avoid them. And I think with double Guildgate, we're not going to need it. Especially with only Statue as the black card. Uh, but there's nothing on color that's any good. Okay, pick 11. We'll play a, we'll play a sixth... Or sorry, a 7th 5-drop? Sure. Watcher in the Mist is good enough to justify it. 3-4 Flyer and you Surveil 2 to set up your draws. 12 Generous Strays, fine. 13, another Ceratoc is fine. We'll still have the Deadweight option. Yeah, we've got a lot of finishers. We have tons of five mana plays, and we have these that flip up that are big. I might just cut like the two Ceratox in the middle here and just go all three drops and five drops. 
kind of funny. I think that probably is about what we want to do. We're only cutting three cards here. So two Ceratox as some of the weakest cards in the deck. Almost definitely supposed to cut like one Chillbringer, but I'm not going to. I like having Demir Informant and two Night Veil Sprites to surveil for the Sample Collector. Plus I've got the Trollbred Guardian, so we get Trample on everything we're putting the counters on with the Sample Collector. Sample Collector looks kind of interesting in here, actually. Like, I'm thinking we want to cut one of our three mana cards here, but... Don't think it's the Sample Collector. Maybe it's the Generous Tray, but that's got a pretty good ETB. Draw a card when it hits the board. It is only a 1-2 body, but... I'm chump with that. It's another way to trigger Eavesdropper. Jaded Analyst. There's no way we can cut the Rubble Belt Maverick, because that's another card that works great with the Collect Evidence. But I could always just drop the Sample Collector and then just not worry about the Collect Evidence stuff anymore. And then I could cut some Collect Evidence stuff to put other things back in. Probably reasonable, too. We might want to play 18 lands here with how high the curve is, with all these 5 drops and a 7 drop and two fives to flip. Plus, we can surveil out of Flood a little bit. What if I just ruin everybody's day and we just play a 42-card, 18-land deck? Just do very suboptimal things. We got 14 blue cards, 11 green, and just one black, and the only black card is Statue. I don't even think we play a Swamp. Because um, just two black sources to cast Statue, and then we can still always cast Status, as I was saying. This is 16, this is 18 lands. This is the wrong 18 lands, though. This is 9-9 nine, nine split on green-blue. We actually want to be more like 10-8. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to run a 42-card 18-land deck, which is going to be about the equivalent of like a 17.3-land 40-card deck, something like that. I don't know, math. Whatever, it, it is suboptimal, but it's what I'm rolling with. All right, here's a look at the deck list for today. It's going to be a Simic Tempo deck with a tiny little splash for a tiny bit of removal off of status and statue. So primarily, we are going to play some random cheap creatures that get some surveil going to set up our draws. And then we hit a ton of roadblocks at three mana, some one fours, one twos, two threes, and two twos to get some blocking. And we're hoping to just go crazy in the late game. Big flying tempo plays like a playset of Chillbringers and a bunch of massive threats like Crocodile, Vengeful Creeper, Glint Weaver, Trollbred Guardian, and more. So really solid looking deck here. We're just hoping not to get super aggroed out, in which case we could have some pretty explosive late games. But we'll see if we manage to achieve all that as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the draw for game one. We've got Night Veil Sprite to try to surveil towards the green source. If we can hit it, the hand looks pretty great. We could surveil some big stuff into the grave for Sample Collector. We have Generous Trade to draw another card looking for the next land. Ooh, they got the Tiny Bones from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. That alone might be worth the, uh, the pre-order for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Don't, don't be surprised if Tiny Bones is my pet next week. All right, there's the green source, so we don't even need the Surveil. We're still going to set it up. I'm not going to just not cast my Night Veil Sprite. We can still use the Surveil to get cards in Grave for Sample Collector. Ooh, and we can also get it to just get rid of Premium Removal and destroy any Artifact Creature Planeswalker. We take those. It's Generous Stray. Draw a card. Making sure we hit all the lands to get to 5 mana. That's the really important number. It's the 4th land from our opponent since they are on the play. They can always just attack into the generous strain if I block they buff. But if they want to cast another card here then they can't attack this turn. Thank you for your service generous strain. 
we're just gonna start a Chillbringer chain at five mana. It's gonna be the best. So for now, do I Sample Collector or do I Demir Informant? Well, I have no evidence for the Sample Collector right now, so... I think Informant is fine. We can still double block the Thirsting Shade and kill it. Keep a Slime Bind. Depending on how big their play is this turn, we might start with Watcher in the Mist and then start just loading out Chillbringers. Pre-combat buff? They've got an aura or something they're going to throw on that thing? Nope, they might have a trick here. Like uh, plus two plus oh, return it from grave. Nope, just getting in for damage, fair enough. Yeah, they did not play any more creatures, so I'm just going to watch her in the mist over Chillbringer here. Because that's already big enough to stop carrying him from attacking anyway. Ooh. Draw Crocodile, draw the land to hardcast it? No, I'm just going to keep milling lands. Because I'm not going to cast a Crocodile for a while. I'm going to go Chillbringer, and then I'm going to go Chillbringer. Then I might play Crocodile, and by then I might have drawn a 6 land to just go face down Collector. Or sorry, Collector and face down Crocodile. Dead Revels for just a Thirsting Shade. That is rough. Yeah, they didn't draw any other creatures yet. So it's like, well, you can Dead Revels your 1-drop or do nothing this turn. And they chose two Dead Revels, the 1-drop. I think I'm actually... I'm actually getting more damage going for Sample Collector Slime Bind here, so we can Slime Bind the Lifelink to slow them down. Like, Sample Collector is going to attack as a 3-4, and they only have one flyer, so it's going to hit just as hard as a Chillbringer will hit. This way we stop their main way to to mitigate the damage we're dealing. Yeah, if they want to crack back with Carrying Imp, that's fine. We are definitely, with this hand, uh, going to be out racing. But this does mean they can trigger Spectacle on their cards like Dead Revel that are cheaper once they've uh, dealt damage to us. Severed Strands, Sack the Thirsting Shade. Okay, I can't do anything about that then. For mana efficiency, we probably still slime bind the imp, but it's a little awkward. There's the sixth mana to hard cast a crocodile for the turn. Yeah, imp's already tapped, so I guess we go for that. Spread the love, go for a 2-5 and a 2-3. Um, and then we can uh, stun the imp with the chillbringers so they don't have any chump blocks set up. Or if they play a better blocker, we stun that instead. Blade Brand, just cycle it, look for something. And it doesn't look like they find anything. So, let's just go for damage and she'll bring her down their only blocker. They are dead in one more swing. There's a roustabout for a single blocker. They still take eight on board, which is lethal. And I could always chill bring her that. Gravitic Punch, shoot me in the face for three. And they're already done on board, but Chillbringer just makes it super lethal and super simple. 
That is going to be 1 and 0 oh to start things off. Here we are for game 2. We got Night Veil Sprite into Generous Stray again. It's some of the better early game plays for this deck. We don't really play any beef early. It's just small creatures that give us a little bit of value. Electrostatic field. Luckily, I'm not going to be doing too much attacking on the ground, so... I don't care too much about the defender. I'm a little worried about the damage output it's going to do. As much as I need lands here, I am not passing up on one of our 42 Chillbringers. Okay, play a face down crocodile. Gonna surveil towards the land. Oh, Sonic Assault. Tap the sprite and do a bunch of damage to me with the field. Yeah, Sonic Assault Electrostatic Field is very threatening. This has jump starts, so they can do it again by discarding a card. This is going to be a full-on, like, electrostatic field burn kind of deck. That's a bad draw. I guess it's not horrific. It might kill the electrostatic field here, which is something. But we're really looking for lands, and definitely not seven drops. Okay, they need a two mana way to shoot a 2-2 two -two here to stop this from working because we've got Ward. Sure strike for first strike. Well, slime bind, reverse that. Oh my god, does the does the combat trick work in Thenu? No, okay. <laughs> it looked like it for a second. That would have been hilarious. We do win that war. Status into sure strike into slime bind. There's the Beacon Bolt to kill the Night Veil Sprite. That's a super good card because it's two removal spells in one. Uh, they just have to discard an extra land later. They'll be blowing up another one of our creatures. We have finally found land four, which is wonderful. Gives us the Loxodon Eavesdropper, which gives us a clue token. So if we don't find land five next turn, we can at least crack a clue and get closer. Candlestick. No creatures on board, though, so they might want to sack that. It is the clue equipment. Skewer the critics. Skewer the eavesdropper. Fair enough. We hit the land so I can chill bring her. But they have no creatures on board. I think I'd rather just flip up the crocodelf and just start building up my supply of clue tokens. So if anything crazy happens, we can just win the long game with card advantage by having a bunch of leftover clues. And this is adding just as much power to the board. If I cast a Chillbringer, I've got a one power creature, a two power creature, and a three power creature for six total. If I flip a Crocodile, I also have six total power. So now they have to uh, Sonic Assault the Crocodile here, take one. And at this point, I don't really have another choice but to cast a Chillbringer. I don't think I'm cracking two clues looking for a two mana creature. We don't have a lot of those. I've got a lot of beef in this deck. 
And while I won't be stunning anything this turn, I've got two more Chillbringers, so I think I'll still have enough to stun if I need to. Magnetic Snuffler. So the stun is the kill. Let's go. Chillbringer copy number two, and we'll start this draft off two and O. Oh. Heading into game number three. Here we are for game three with another super solid opening hand. We are on the draw here. We get to start off with a Night Veil Sprite, have a Slime Bind for their first scary threat. Maybe even just trade a Jaded Analyst into a 2 2 or a 3 3 to buy us some time. Ooh, Golgari Guildgate. We got our Black Source if we draw into Statue. Then that will be a great removal spell. Market Watch Phantom is the first play from our opponent. I think we want to set up the Surveilling first here, because if I cast Jaded Analyst and they play any creature, they're just going to fly over it this turn anyway. But they are not playing a creature this turn, so we could have found the trade there. Let's Surveil. Watcher in the Mist. I have two Chillbringers for five drops and a seven drop in my hand. I don't know if I can afford to keep another five drop, but that five drop digs for more lands, I'm going to keep it. It is risky, but I'm going to keep it. Then I th think we slime bind the Phantom because Analyst might just not even block it. Yeah, so Analyst would have just not blocked it anyway. So we can slime bind that, and then Analyst can always block the Child of the Night, because that's on the ground. So Surveil into the land. Not a land, so mill it. <laughs> as good as Chillbringer is. I just kept the Watcher in the Mist. I can't keep a Chillbringer too. Grotesque dis Demise, my 3-2 Defender. I'm pretty fine with that. That's better than if they did that to the Night Veil Sprite for sure. Let's play another land. I think we keep that with Glint Weaver coming up. Let's see if there's another one right beneath it. There is not, but there's a Generous Stray. Uh, yeah, no, we just mill that. Like, I could cast the Generous Stray, and that could cycle into the land, but it's like, I'm not going to. I'm going to play Chillbringer next turn, then I'm going to play Chillbringer turns, uh, turn 7 as well, if I don't have the Glint Weaver mana by then. And if I do have the Glint Weaver mana, I'm just going to play a Glint Weaver. Alright, there's the Glint Weaver mana, so we're going to play a Glint Weaver. They're down to two cards in hand, and it is time for just the stun party. Chillbringers and Glint Weavers galore. Alright, they just passed the turn. Let's see what this is going to be here. Be like one removal spell and then that's not that bad at all they kill the night veil sprite probably um don't think i keep a combat trick even if it is trample because i just have a chillbringer to stun any blocker that i want a combat trick over anyway Show me your crazy trick. It's the board pipe, okay. Well, we could still win from here. It's gonna be harder, because they're ahead, especially if I just hit lands. Technically, I'm ahead. I have three cards to there too, but I have hit all lands, because we wanted to hit up to the seventh land, and then we can't, couldn't surveil from there. Probably worth it for the tempo to just play the Chillbringer immediately. Start getting damage in. Oh, 
Yikes. That one for one trade into the Chillbringer. Okay, excellent start to the top deck war. That makes up for some lands right there. Just instantly. I kind of like against a removal heavy deck like this. I kind of like playing this face down so they don't know exactly how scary this is or exactly how big it is. And we tax them if they play targeted removal. Because we have more than enough mana to just flip this up anyway. So I, I like going for the face down here. Okay, well, it's the literal only thing that would make that bad would be burn, but they are black white at the core, so I wasn't expecting burn. I was thinking of playing around like exile target creature, destroy target creature, like every other removal spell they just played. Obviously, that played out terribly. Well, I guess these removal spells actually exile creature power three or less. No, you can't. You can't just win the top deck war this hard on me. Oh, uh, that's going to be really, really irritating if they still have instant sorceries in hand. They just drawn six lands and that is it all game. That's currently what it looks like. That's what it is. Well. Then we lose. Even if I had played the face-up Crocodile, if they had to get the point to just kill that anyway. Still got a Surveil here. Oh my god. I think we've hit at least twice as many lands as our opponent because we've Surveilled to where we've hit at least 12. We have drawn a little more cards, but I've Surveilled so many lands away by now. 10, 11, 12, 13. We've actually hit 13 of our lands. Vengeful Creeper. Okay, that's big on blocks. That is big on blocks. Do I have the mana to play that and flip it in the same turn? Wow. I guess there's still... I'm down to 12 cards. There's still like 5 lands in there. No, 4 at this point. I do have the mana to play it face down and flip it, so this is fine. If they try to Lightning Helix it or Grotesque Demise or something, then the flip stops that. Well, the flip doesn't stop that. Great. Where is your seventh land? Stop like a Mythic Rare? Feels two to me when it dies. So I actually can't afford to attack now because if I do, I take three from Phoenix, and if this ever dies, I die. I have to chump Phoenix this turn. What did I pick? I picked human. I can kill the 2-2 two -two and have no board left, including my 4-4 death toucher. How have you still not hit land 7? And now we're just dead to Ilgon inheritance. Strain for 4. Well, what are you gonna do? Um... I mean, we could have played it out slightly better if we had played the Crocodile face up instead of face down, but they still had to get the point to kill it. I mean, there is always that we could have not surveilled towards the lands as hard, but then we wouldn't have hit that Glint Weaver as early. It's just kind of rough the way the draws lined up, where we hit like all of our non-lands in a clump and we had to surveil non-lands into the grave to hit the lands and then once we hit the seventh land to get the glint weaver on board 
that's when we hit the massive land clump that we just like still tried to surveil our way through, but it was insanely large of a land clump. Things just ordered up really poorly for us, and there's not much you can do about that. We are two and one heading into game four. Here we are for game four on the draw again. We've got Nightvale Sprite into Generous Stray. Probably our best turn two, three plays. So at least there is that. Playing against Green White with Tunnel Tipster turn two. Oh lord. One of the worst feelings is an opponent on the play with a mana dork. That means they're casting four mana spells while you're sitting there with two lands. And there they go. Syndicate Messenger completely blocks the Night Veil Sprite off unless I Pax Favor. Which I guess since I have land four, I can do. That's land five, which I definitely need with Glint Weaver in hand. Okay, well, the Messenger's out of the way. But it's, uh... It's 1-1 one, one Flyer is still there. I thought this gave Trample as well. Ew. Doesn't even give Trample. Alright, there's an Axebane Beast. Um, that is land 6 out of 7 for Glint Weaver. We keep it. And we just start going to Chillbringer Town. Case of the Gateway Express to kill Generous Tray so they can activate it. Oh my god. How on earth did you get two of those and one murders at Karlov Manor pack? And now they're both active for plus two plus zero. Oh. Irina hates me today. These are some really statistically improbable things that are absolutely destroying us right now. Just top deck more removal. Might as well. We can still stabilize off of Glint Weaver if we don't immediately die here. The only way to die is for them to have removal and extra damage here. So it has to be a removal spell that also buffs the board in some way. Blade Instructor still? Nah, that doesn't even matter. I gained 6, I'm at 10. They hit for 8. And I guess it could. Well, that is actually insane. That puts us to one life and forces us to trade off. What a hand. I think the only thing that could possibly beat that hand is like a board wipe. I think any deck in the universe wins this game. Oh, really frustrating little lineup of turns there. Um... Not turns, but of, of games. Having the way that last game ended just immediately into this is a very disappointing turnaround from the 2-0 start. Okay, you got me. I'm over it. I'm over it. I just played the best common in the format as well for their next play. I am going to play on tilt for game number five. Because there is some karmic justice going on right now for having 7 0 the last draft. Those last two games were insane. Just one of the nastiest, most wild double removal curves you can get. Having the mana dork on the play into double kill your creature buff my entire board is, again, just actually insane. Out of only one pack of murders at Carlisle Manor to even open those cases, let alone get past them. It was just an absolutely disgusting rollout on the play that wasn't going to be super beatable for anybody. And then the game right before that, obviously getting hit by Karabad, draws in the top deck war. So, Arena does not want me to 7 0 twice. It really doesn't. The gods of R and Jesus are against us with this deck. But we'll do everything in our power to turn this ship around 
at least get one more win so we can 50-50 this draft. But it feels like I I have just angered several gods in some way or another with how those last two games went. That was insanity. All right, Boros aggro curving out over there. Two drop and a three drop. It's got the end of the battlefield effect to get right past a two two blocker. There's a Chillbringer coming up. That's going to be a nice one here. I think I'm going to have to spend the, um, the Vengeful Creeper to just trade into something here. Rather than flipping it later. Because we're going to play a Chillbringer next turn, then a Killer Among Us. Some some sequence. We might Killer Among Us before the Chillbringer. But we'll do both those cards next couple turns. Okay, let's... Let's Chillbringer down the Legionnaire. I think that's fine. Surveil. Crocodile. I really don't want to repeat where I mill a bunch of pretty solid high mana value cards and then hit the land clump after we cast the Glint Weaver. So I'm going to keep this. And if it means that we don't play Glint Weaver in two turns, that's fine. Killer Among Us into Crocodile is still a good couple turns. Or Crocodile into Killer Among Us, either way. Kind of have to hold back on blocks now. I mean, I could attack into this thing, but then it means that they attack really well. Four damage in the sky here. Uh, but that means we're pretty weak to removal. We'll see. See what happens here. Go for the merfolk this time. Okay, that is incredible. Plus one, plus one counter on the Parhelion Patrol means it gets to attack in and mentor up the Legionnaire, so they have two, three power flyers, so we can't actually trade in. Especially if they have a combat trick here, that's going to be devastating, but I can't really take six to the face. We're going to go for it. All right, they don't have an extra combat trick, so we do get to get rid of the Mentor Flyer, which is very good. There's a face down from them. And face down is a dog walker for a wide board. Okay, out cold is a sweet draw. Does mean I don't get to Glint Weaver yet. But I can stun the Legionnaire and the Dog Walker. And draw a card. Okay, at this point I really want to play Glint Weaver next turn, but watching the miss next turn also stops Legionnaire, so... I guess I keep a guaranteed way to block Legionnaire rather than gambling on the land for Glint Weaver. I think that's probably okay. And we're going to use the stun during their turn so that they don't get to get rid of one of the stun counters yet. Summary Judgment, kill the Merfolk, sure. And now they're out of cards. Actually stun the Orator here. Because if the Dog Walker attacks, I block with a 1-1. One, one. This looks like a great position to be able to recover here. They would have to draw real well. The breakthrough, I think. 
Well, one of these one ones is still pretty good. Well, let's save the human. Just having a one one to block dog walker still looks pretty nice. Another Night Veil Sprite and a Deduce. Okay. Guess I can deduce, draw two, and play Night Veil Sprite in the same turn. I just hold the human back so we can block both of these. But still poke for one. I guess I could always Chillbringer instead. It is a little spicier. Maybe that's why we lost that one game. Maybe we should have just kept all the non-lands and just given up on Glintweaver because it's working really well this game. Just be like, you know what? I don't need Glintweaver. We don't need to get to seven mana. Just cast everything else. Civic Stalwart. Ooh, that would have been really big earlier. Still pretty large. Still quite threatening. the point where I do have to trade a flyer off here to stop some damage. I guess we can do this. This feels better. Just get a chomp in there, but keep the flyer around. There is land seven for Glint Weaver. I'm gonna play a face down on the ground and a Night Veil Sprite, because I don't need to crack the clue right now to have solid or not solid blocks, but to have the mana for the Glint Weaver. So let's just get more solid blocks. I think I can afford to attack like this. Considering I'm going to gain a bunch of life next turn. So we can go 1-2 on the 3-1, three, 3-4 on the 3-3, three, 2-2 three, two, two on the 2-2, two, two, take 3 damage on board. They need another pretty big trick like Civic Stalwart that buffs the whole board. Well, it's going to be some kind of combat trick. Let's see what it is. Oh, please tell me it's not Lava Axe, 5 damage to face. Could be something like that. Moment of truth! It's gotta be that Lava Axe, like, right now. Or this gains me the life to get back in the game. Three, four, five, six, seven. I could try to lethal them by putting it all on these. Sure. That'll be lethal damage on board, and I'll still gain 4. Well, we did hit the land clump again after we hit Glint Weaver mana. Oh, it's fog. <laughs> Literal fog. Okay. Luckily, I survive a fog and kill them next turn. All right. Very stressfully close one there, especially after a couple brutal losses in a row. But we do manage to get our third victory and at the very worst have another 50-50 average run out of this draft. We are now 3-2, and two, heading into game 6. Alright, here we are for game 6 on the draw. We've got Night Veil Sprite into Sample Collector this time around. Should be an interesting little 1-2 punch if we hit the right stuff. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say if we hit the right stuff, then we could have the evidence for the Sample Collector early off of the Surveils. Uh, but then we hit Generous Stray, which means I can do the Night Veil Sprite into Generous Stray thing that we've been doing in almost every other game. Which would be funny. It would be funny, but... Uh, okay. Gatebreaker Ram is a massive, massive, massive problem. It's Vigilance, so I can't Sample Collector attack into that thing. My Slime Bind is not going to be big enough if they play any other gates. Gatebreaker Ram is an incredible card and a massive threat. We're going to have to just hit a massive chain of Chillbringers or something to get there. This 
So let's try to get that going, I guess. It's a 5-5 five five already. Oh my god, we might just get blown out by Gatebreaker here. Well, we've got the fifth land to Chillbringer next turn. Just slime bind this turn. I think. So I can get a counter on the sprite and start hitting for two a turn. Cool. Now it's still a massive blocker, but it's only going to poke for one or two a turn. One a turn it is. It's a Conclave Cavalier. 4-4 four, four Vigilance? That is a spookier, bigger threat to chill bring her down at this point. I can order things to have Night Veil Sprite go before Sample Collector. So if we hit something like a Glint Weaver, then we can get another plus and plus one counter. Nightfill Sprite Sample Collector is kind of popping off here. It's pretty sweet. Sumala Woodshaper. Dig for an enchantment or creatures. So they can look for enchantment-based removal, and they find it with Makeshift Binding. One of the best removal spells in this whole format from Murders at Karlov Manor. Okay. I mean, they could double block Sample Collector with Woodshaper Gatebreaker Ram to kill it now if I don't hit the evidence I need. That'd be kind of bold to send it in again this turn. Yeah, we can just send it in the sky and we should be fine. And then I think I want to just play another Flyer with Chillbringer. Keep that damage just coming. I think I keep another Flyer. At this point, we're doing a ton of damage in the sky. That is definitely our game plan. Just fly on in. My apologies. I will have to check on that. I will do that after this game. So, Sprite plus Generous Together, Stray is the play. Oh wow, and I got a follow at the same time <laughs> as I got a message. Trying to put me in full ADHD mode. Alright, here's six damage. Axe Favor is actually kind of big. I'll take that draw. Make it even easier to randomly find lethal here. I guess it wouldn't be randomly. It would be finding lethal with the stuff that we're already actively trying to find lethal with. It's all the flyers that are on board. It's a very clear, very straightforward line to lethal, not a random one. There's a grotesque demise that's still lethal flying damage, and they scoop them up. We are four and two. Solid recovery after a couple losses in a row. We are now at least breaking even on gems out of the event and getting a positive win rate yet again. We are 4-2, and two, heading into game 7. Alright, here we are for game number 7. We've got Rubble Belt Maverick turn 1. This is the first time we've even seen the card, but it is nice in the deck. Getting to set up our draws, look for what we want. Uh, which is not lands with this opening hand. We already have 4. Four? No, we have three. We only need four, though. Could take the fourth, but I could also just Night Veil Sprite towards it later. Our opponent got turn one Leyland of the Guild Pack. They got the Dream, so they have perfect mana of all five colors. Because they had it in the opener, and that could be a problem. <laughs> be pretty funny. Alright, if they don't have a combat trick here, we get to Fairy Duelist and kill the Iron Shell Beetle. So I'm going to go for it. And kill that without losing any creatures. Just a two mana one two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature. Pretty good value. It's a steeple creeper for a four two from our opponent. 
that is large and in charge. Um, can Night Veil Sprite, and I'm still holding up Pax Favor as a trick uh, because of the Convoke, which is kind of sweet. You can block with the Night Veil Sprite and turn it into a 4-5. Are we about to get just the double blowout? Pax Favor for Steeple Creeper, that's not really a blowout. That's a one-for-one one trade. I discard this, they discard that. Uh, but the Fairy Duelist was kind of a blowout, so that was nice. Oh, if they buff the Steeple Creeper, then uh, the Pax Favor thing is not going to work. I can still kill it, and uh, I think I will, because Maverick's not that valuable. Uh, but it is going to cost me Pax Favor and the card that I'm targeting. Okay. And a Night Veil vale Sprite and Deduce. I could go for more damage using the Maverick immediately, but I think it's better to be mana efficient and Deduce. And we've got a Chillbringer coming up. If we top deck a land next turn, that will be incredible. Just tons of flying damage here against a 1-1 on the ground. Fifth mana from our opponent, but for now they only have a 1-1. And they still only have a 1-1. One, one. All right, looks like a good turn for us. Mm, did not hit the fifth Chillbringer mana, so... Crack a clue and put a counter on a Night Veil vale sprite. Seems fine. Mm, still didn't hit the mana. Now I could play a Jaded Analyst instead. I'm not going to be drawing any extra cards anytime soon, so I still think I'd rather just get more... Uh, more power onto the board immediately. We've got two surveil triggers to look for the fifth land now. And there it is. So we keep it. And they are down to 13. So Frenzied Eryx, that could be Haste, or it can just get the plus one, plus one counter. So they're going to get the counter, and it's a 4-4 Trample that also has a big fire-breathing effect. Ooh, Titanic Brawl, that explains why they were just stuck with cards in their hand. They had a fight spell, but they had no creatures big enough to use the fight spell with. Alright, well now we've got a good target for the Chillbringer, so let's stun that. Generous Stray? Sure. I don't mind playing an Analyst and a Stray next turn. Siege Worm. Well, that's a good draw. Now we might just be on out cold. Probably are. It's going to be a 5-5 five, five and a 4-4 four, four that are pretty threatening. And I think I'm just looking for more tempo plays, honestly. We're just looking for another Chillbringer or something. I mean, our board already wins this game because of the out cold. Stunning the board instead of just tapping it. That was my uh, text again. Don't check your phones. Amogus? Sure. Keep Amogus. They have one draw step to somehow not... Die. We'll see if they can do it. Play the Analyst here, because with the clue token on board, we will be able to attack with that next turn as well. So it should be real hard for them to not die. They need to board wipe, and even if they do, we'll have three 1-1s one post-board wipe. Every single 1-1 one -one would be lethal threats. Oh, they had the Case the Shattered Pact Leyline combo. I actually feel bad now. Because that would be solved next turn. They get the flying double strike vigilance, flying double strike these gigantic creatures. Our opponent's deck is is spicy, but they just drew the wrong cards early. And we had great interaction and tricks to play around with to really ruin their early fight spells, but that's a bummer. Very cool deck from our opponent, but we will find the victory there, and we are now five and two in the money out of this draft, no matter what. And here we are on the draw for game 
Where are we on? Game 8? 5 and 2 right now? It's a pretty slow hand. We still have our 2 drop to start things off, but then there's a big gap until we get to 5 mana, which we have all the 5 mana in hand, so the Night Veil Sprite can help try to surveil for something to do on turn 4 at the very least. Found a status statue for removal. Not bad. Just need to find one of our green sources to be able to cast that. I want to play... I really don't want to play an Analyst turn 4. I'm going to hope for better. Honestly, even a forest is better than Analyst on this board, I think. Bounce the Night Veil Sprite? Well... There's our turn four play. We'll take it. Pass with a ton of mana up. Rubble Belt Maverick is not bad at all because it synergizes well with Trollbred Guardian. Frilled Mystic was the plan there. Fair enough. You got it. Counter a 2-drop. Frilled Mystic is an incredible magic card. I do need one forest to cast Statue. I've got a lot in the deck, though, and I don't think I'm casting Statue for quite some time, and I really don't want to Flood. Watcher in the Mist. Fantastic card. Playing one of those ourselves. Starting to look like we are losing the tempo war just because we're on the draw instead of on the play. If I could have cast spells one turn sooner, I would feel much better about slamming down the Guardian right now, but with that Watcher down, I don't feel great about it. Actually, Killer Among Us might even be better on this board. I don't think we chill Bringer, because then we don't have good blocks for Mystic, but either of these gives us good blocks for Mystic. Killer plays better against removal. Troll bed bread gives us better counterattacks. I think I go killer first. Uh the killer's the goblin. So a killer among us and a rubble belt maverick for a little plus and plus on counter synergies with the Guardian is cool. Double block the Frilled Mystic. Trade a token and a Maverick into a combat trick or a Mystic. Either trade is pretty good for us because we want the Maverick in the grave and the token is one third of a killer among us. Oh wow, yeah, trading into a full on removal spell is even better. I am super okay with that outcome. And there's an out cold. That's pretty good. I don't think we need to do that immediately. Drop the guardian, take three this turn. I think that's fine. Fourteen to fourteen. I like dropping the Guardian over a Chillbringer here because if we hit any land in our deck, we can Chillbringer plus Maverick or Chillbringer plus Status. But if I top deck an Island, then on future turns I can only Trollbred Guardian because I only got one green source. But I could tap five Islands for Chillbringer and use the Guild Gate for Status or Maverick. Out Cold was an incredible draw here. This is, out of everything we've drawn, this card more than anything else is what makes me feel like we could turn the tempo around and win this race. 
but we'll see. So now I have access to statue if they do something really weird. So let's send in and post combat Chillbringer. Intrude on the Mind is something really weird. It is also an incredible bomb mythic rare from Murders at Carl of Manor, the strongest of the three sets. They get to draw two or three cards and get a flyer, so it is a three for one at minimum, which is monumentally huge here. Now I am back to not feeling very good. It'd still be okay, this hand is loaded. Well, this is an incredibly threatening play. So if I give them these two cards, Frilled Mystic and... How do you get two Frilled Mystics out of one pack? Ah. Alright, Frilled Mystic and Skitter Eel, and they get a 3-3, three, three, or they get these three cards and a 2-2. Two, two. I'm just going to give them those three cards, because Frilled Mystic is incredible. You can have these three and a 2-2. Two, two. There you go. Double block the goblin. It's fair. I could statue to keep it around. Or they just take it all? That would be wild. When I have trample on the board, wherever I want it. I think we accept the trade here. Rather than casting statue. And then we chill bringer the watcher. And then out cold whatever blockers they play. And that's lethal on board. Is that the, the play here? The plan here? Kind of think so. And cast out cold and status next turn. If I hit a land, I can out cold and buff the guardian to 7-7 seven, seven trample. Let's see if this gets there. They can't counter it. Lethal on board? Is lethal on board? Alright, huge recovery. Massive, massive thanks to large tempo plays like Outcold in particular, um, but the Chillbringer as well. Alright. Incredible stuff yet again. We are now 6 and 2. Pivoted from our 2 2 start into making it all the way to the final boss, the final game of Magic for today. Win or lose, so see if we can get all the way to a 7-win run, or just so close at 6 and 3. Here we are now for the final battle, the final game of Magic for today. Win or lose our last shot at getting one last victory out of this deck. This is not a great opener, because we don't have any blue sources, but we also don't have any blue spells. We can cast everything in the opener. So that... Uh, that's nice, at least. We've got that going for us. Our opponent has taken a mulligan here, but they are on the draw. So it won't be disastrously down in value. Just one mulligan. Playing against blue-red. There's our blue source. We don't get to start things off turn two here, but on the play, that's not as, uh, as deadly or as bad for us as if uh, we didn't start till turn three on the draw. Well, there's our 2-drop. I absolutely would have played that turn 2 if we had it. Since we've got so many expensive spells, it'll take quite some time before we just hard cast that. Uh, I've got no evidence for the Sample Collector coming up anytime soon, so I think we just roll with the uh, Crocodelf as the card that's going to be the hardest for them to spend cheap burn on because of the ward. So it's our threat that's most likely to stick around. If I cast a Sample Collector, there's plenty of ways they could just spend a red and one and like burn it away. In this format. And worst case scenario, when they do end up killing our Crocodile with some burn spell that wouldn't have killed it when it flips up, that still is going to mean that we have enough evidence in our grave that Sample Collector gets to do some, uh, some nasty stuff in the future, which is spicy. So I think we want to draw a card here because we really want to hit land 5 next turn so I could cast Creeper face up or just a Killer Among Us as a really big play. So we're going to Generous Stray. Well, let's threaten the uh, the flip or the combat trick here and send in for two, since this isn't going to block anyway. Might as well 
might as well try to get two damage in for free. We do get two free damage. We take those. Generous Stray does not find land five, but it gets us one card closer. If we didn't cast Generous Stray right now, we would have top decked Chillbringer next turn. Now we'll top deck whatever's next, which could be land five. It's a Muse Drake. Solid blocker. It is not land five, it's another Chillbringer. Uh, okay, so we've got a game on our hands. If we had curved out perfectly to land five, we'd probably just steamroll here, but is going to be a little more of a back and forth than that. We can't break through the Muse Drake. They're threatening to get a ton of damage off with this Dragonauts, but I can't do anything about that. Just play a sample collector here, I guess. Suppose we threaten our trick again, since we can't do any blocking anyway. All right. Muse Drake is much less important than we Dragonauts, so they are going to take the bluff there and go for the block. On the plus side, with two Chillbringers in hand, like with, with our draw being Chillbringer instead of land 5, that does mean that we can make up for the lost tempo when we hit land 5, because we're going to be stunning so much. Okay, there's the detonation to kill the Collector, and that'll also buff the Dragonauts. Send in both. Bold move. Yikes. Um, now I can Fairy Duelist plus status to kill a Wee Dragonauts. I think that will be the play. And a two for one ourselves, but I think it'll be worth it here. I guess we only two for one ourselves if the Dragonauts is going to be big enough to kill something. Which means they'd have to play an instant or sorcery. Problem is they're blue-red, they could have an instant to kill the duelist in response to me trying to status it for death touch, and that would be a disaster. I don't know, we'll see how this how this works out for us. Sages Row Savant for a 2-1 and scry two. Four mana up in a blue-red deck. They probably have instants. Hopefully not good enough ones. Okay, they're just going to Scorch Mark before I can even try to status. Which means I don't get blown out. In fact, they do. If they waited till I attempted the block plus status, that would have been... A disaster. Alright, and now we have hit land 5 for the Chillbringer Dream Teams. I think we attack both here and flip up if they block. If they don't, we actually kill her among us this turn. Oh. we Crocodile says hello. The board state is now a single 1-3 flyer versus a 5-5 five, five, and a 1-2. We are looking favored over here. It's a candlestick to make the flyer a 2 4. That's still not big enough to matter too much. It could crack that and get a counter on the novelist. Oh, they're going to go for the counter on the Muse Drake. Or the, uh, the candlestick on the Muse Drake. There's just a Drake flying around trying to hit me in the face with a candlestick. That is kind of hilarious. Um, yeah, and now we're just fully loaded with threat after threat after threat to play. Actually, Killer Among Us is probably more likely to find damage than Trollbred Guardian here. But I figure either way, it's play like a really high power spell, and then she'll bring her next turn for the stun, because they have a low enough amount of creatures that flying doesn't really matter. What matters is just the pure power, the stat lines of what we're playing.
But Killer Among Us is technically slightly more stats than Trollbred Guardian, so I should have led with that. 4-4 four, four, and 2-1 one, ones. Plus, I could have the trick of Killer Among Us into the Guardian, where I play the Killer Among Us next turn, I play the Guardian, so whatever I put the counters onto is now Death Touch Trample and definitely hits for a ton. It's a pretty cool 1-2 punch, so definitely should have sequenced these two differently. Not that it's massively likely to matter, because even if they have the removal to not die this turn, the board is now incredibly favored. And they need the removal to not die this turn. And there they go, Sonic Assaults. It's actually a threatening amount of damage when they recast it here. Because they tap our only flying blocker to hit us with Muse Drake, that's three, puts us to six. They have to be able to find six more damage to kill us, though. Off of only three mana, because three of their mana has to be spent on Sonic Assault. We're probably fine here, but I don't think it's impossible for us to die. Alright, Muse Drake makes it impossible. I don't think there's anything that's going to kill us for two. Muse Drake, Electromancer, they are super duper dead on board because of Trollbred Guardian's Trample. Seven power with Trample. You block like every other creature and take seven. But that is dead on board. I could also Chillbringer for it, but we'll just Trollbred. And that's enough. They block Chillbringer, they block Crocodile, they block Trollbred, but I Trample over with Trollbred. And there we go. That is another seven win run out of the Ravnica Chaos Drafts. That's two in a row. We went 7-0 into 7-2. Things were looking really rocky at the start there. Was definitely getting tilted in the, the, our two losses in a row because we had some, some really bad draws and stuff. But huge recovery five games in a row for the 5-0 finish here to turn it into a 7-2 run. Once again, really happy with this deck, pretty happy with how I drafted. Again, it probably could use less 5 drops, uh, but I could not resist playing all the Chillbringers. The deck build could have been better. We played 42 cards, you're basically always supposed to cut down to 40. But if you really, really can't figure out what is the worst card in your deck, then it's not too unreasonable to play 41 or 42 sometimes but it is always technically incorrect, so I try to always cut down to 40 cards here. Um, but we went for memes. We went for the 42 Chillbringer deck, and it was fun, it was powerful, and it got us the seven win run. So super, super sweet stuff. Out of today's draft, that means we are going to yet again end this draft with 2,200 gems, six packs of Murders at Karlov Manor as the prizes. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below where I'm live every Wednesday. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.